Return to Moria is one of them games that you'll find all sorts of stuff, items, craftables that require a lot of refined materials or stuff that you just simply won't get for ages. The biggest one in the early game is steel. Today I'm going to show you how to get steel quick and easy. If you do find this video useful, do go and check out the rest of them, leave a like, maybe even subscribe, and let's go. How to get steel in Return to Moria. Steel of course is important for making weapons, but more importantly is making a steel pickaxe so you can actually get into the mines of Modia. When you come to the Elven Quarter you'll find the tunnel leading to it will be unbreakable with your common iron one. This is where the game really starts to open out and of course you'll be building, gathering lots of ores and minerals from all the deposits in the mines. So to get steel you have to go ahead and craft it with iron ore. So you're going to need a ton of iron ore, a ton of coal and that's how you make steel ingots. In fact free iron ore, free coal and that will give you one steel. You've got to find the Forge of Narve which is in the Elven Quarter. It has got a lot of enemies around it either side and so you are going to have to get through the ruins and hopefully avoid all sorts of things like wolves and goblin men and more. As long as you're following the story beats and pretty much going to the marker's cell out on the map or indeed on your minimap, you should be able to get to it pretty easily. But I wouldn't run here without any kind of gear. Set up a small base somewhere halfway between, gather up lots of iron and obviously try and get loads of coal. You'll find both of them in abundance, you should do, in the Westgate zone which is the area just before you get to the Elven Quarter. Also iron is in a good amount in the Elven Quarter also, look near the rivers for more deposits. Once you're at the forge you need to find three pieces to repair it. You've got this crank that should be pretty close to it in this main room so make sure you've got plenty of torches to see or flares. And likewise close by you should find this gear that you have to take up the left hand side of the stairwell and place it in where the yellow marker is. Third one's going to be a bit more difficult, it will be guarded by hobgoblin men but you could potentially lure a bear down here as bears and goblin men hate each other and will fight otherwise you might be able to sneak around and hopefully pick this up and try and avoid them but it's going to be tough. Your best bet is to have a shield equipped and press the RT button to block and then attack and you can actually hit them with the shield stunning them and then you'll be able to wait on them. Then you've just got to carry the replacement pipe through the main chamber and you're going to be taking it to the right hand side stairwell. Here you're going to chuck it as high as you can onto the broken stairs. Now you could make this area your base if you really wanted to. You could put defences up on the walls and stop other enemies from getting in. But I would advise against that. I would actually place the actual piece of pipe, go and activate the forge and then pretty much get ready for a fight with a ton of goblins. As I said, you could defend this place, you could make this your main. It is a good way to have because the forge does craft certain things that you can't craft at your own forge. But it's not really essential. Another thing to remember is you will need to put a wooden platform up close to the stairs to be able to jump up here. Now sometimes enemies will spawn up here, other times not. So if you've got lots of bow and arrows you may be able to get up some high and rain trouble on them. The Yorks will take pretty much just one hit, the Goblin Men are going to be a bit tougher and of course you still may have bands of Wolves attacking as well. The Horde will actually stop attacking pretty much as soon as you die, so yes you can carry on fighting them but it took a long time for me to clear these out, I don't think I've ever actually done it without dying. So make sure you've got a respawn point nearby in one of the ruins on either side and you can just come back here and hopefully pick up all the rest of the loot. A good thing also is you'll be farming coins here if you want lots of coin piles. That's probably the only other reason to really try and win through and defeat all the enemies. They should mostly have scarpered by the time you get back with only maybe a couple still there. Then you can check out what the forge has got. And then you should be able to see iron ingots and steel ingots to be made at the furnace as well. Now I had a bit of a glitch where they didn't appear until I went back to my own furnace and crafted one steel ingot and then I could go and craft them in the furnace here. So if you have made this area your base and it isn't showing them that may be a slight issue or bug. There's absolutely no benefit from crafting it at this furnace, you don't get any faster time or you get more ingots or reduced cost, it's exactly the same as your furnace is but obviously it's just in a more central location. And that's pretty much it, once you start getting some of the elven wood nearby you'll start unlocking more and more recipes and you'll be able to start crafting more of the new armours and weapons you found in this zone. 
Semi-spoiler, but obviously you'll find copper in the next area, which is the Mines of Moria itself. And that's when you can really start crafting much better armors and gears. Hope that's helped. If it has, leave a like, check out the rest of my guides, and I'll see you at bags later.